What is up, ladies and gentlemen? How we doing, guys? It's been a minute. I will admit, it has been a minute since we've gone live on this channel, but we're live now, and that's what matters. Why, well, hello there, Mindstormer. What's up, Bomb? What's up, Nathaniel Isaacs? Yo to all of you, my fellow gamers. If you're new here, my name is Julian Melnick. I also go by JD. I am the host of this Caffeine and Console. Stay caffeinated, friends and family. This from Morgan. I'll answer your question right here. It is dangerous to go alone, which is true. Mm. I'm your fellow gamer, the rugged gamer. And we're here to talk Steam Deck, but Morgan, I think I'm going to switch to PS5. What do you think, JD? I'm having a rough time deciding. Let me help you make that decision right now. <laughs> okay, enough of that nonsense. Um, oh, Get comfortable. It's been a while. I removed the armrest. Whoa, God. I removed the armrests from my chair so it's a lot better steam deck or cfw gen 1 switch though i don't know what the cfw gen 1 is i'm tired of waiting for xbox exclusives and i know there's stuff on ps what i know that i know i would play well let me let me answer you this i have been primarily using my playstation 5 uh, for six, eight months now, I, I've, uh, I got rid of my series X. I sold my series X to my, my buddy, Steven, because he had a one S and he's like, I need to upgrade. And I was like, cool. I have a series X. I'm not using as much as I thought I would. So I sold my series X to him. I still have my series S, which has the attached, uh, X screen, which I'm giving away by the way, anyone here who wants to be a part of that giveaway, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Cause I'm giving away a X screen, a case for the X screen, extra stuff. Um, and so make sure you're subscribed to the channel and uh, I'm figuring out what I'm going to be, how I'm going to be conducting the giveaway. I'm pretty sure it's going to be through the discord, but all of that stuff, all those links will be properly distributed once I decide that the giveaway is going to go live. Um, so let's talk, let's get back to it. I have been using my PlayStation five as my primary um, current gen gaming console for Gosh, I, I want to say like since, since I got it, when I first got it, I didn't know how to use it. Um, and so I honestly, I didn't know how to use it. I'm like, I, I have this thing. I have the series S I have game pass. I have all these games ex like that I've able to access and it just seems redundant. So I didn't use my PlayStation five for like the first six months I got it. And then I started to download games that I wanted to use more. And I started playing my PlayStation 5 more and more and more. And now I can honestly say, with the exception of, of course, my Nintendo Switch OLED, as well as the Steam Deck, I, I don't even have my Xbox plugged in anymore because the game, the game offerings right now are just not, not that good. And anything that I want to play I play on my PlayStation 5. I also prefer this controller setup. I have a custom hex controller that I have set up with the back paddles, and I have the PlayStation 5 DualSense Edge on the way. So honestly, Morgan, I would say it's a toughie because the ecosystem that you have right now been a part of is pretty well established for you. And so you might have to rebuy some games if you end up wanting to play games that you've been playing on Xbox onto the PlayStation 5. But if there are games on the PlayStation 5 that you're far more interested in than the Xbox, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not dis I wouldn't be disappointed with the Switch personally. It just comes down to what games you want to play. And if the games aren't on Xbox, then yeah, switch over to PlayStation 5, dude. Honestly. And I honestly, when it comes to like the, the difference between 
what's available to you and exclusives. Um, we're talking like 5%, right? 5 to 10% of games are exclusive to Xbox or PlayStation. With the So, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm so upset about it. I just got a custom Xbox controller, too. I want to play Shadow of the Colossus so bad. Did I send it back to you? Or do I still have it? I still have it. Right? Yeah, I still have it. It's sitting on over here. So... I don't see a, I don't see a world. No, but it's on PlayStation Plus. Oh, sick. I don't see a world. And guys, you can come at me for this. Let's talk in the chat. Um, it is subscriber only. Uh, you have to be subscribed for five minutes to have the conversation. This is to eliminate bots, which I'm getting hit hard with bots. So if you want to have a conversation, please hit the sub, be a part of the conversation. Um, okay, cool. Mindstormer. I don't see I don't see a place where Xbox really starts to lead the way. It's all good, Morgan. I don't see as I don't see it. Xbox has the best value, but we're seeing a little bit of a lack of content, and it's pretty rough for gamers. PS exclusives are just unmatched. Dad of War is superior to any Xbox games, in my opinion. Uh, Edge, Edgar, I wouldn't say that. Um, I wouldn't say that it's better or sorry, I wouldn't say it's superior personally, but what I would say is uh, when it comes to games in general, yes, PlayStation does is known for offering a more consistent single player thing. And what I'm noticing too, is some of my favorite streamers play what's up jason uh play on the uh playstation when they're playing a single player game a lot of people saying 2023 is xbox here but right now it doesn't seem so especially with the news that came out that they just laid off like uh how many people let me look it up right now hold on microsoft lays off 10,000 workers Ten thousand workers. Um, and now I don't know the intricacies of that, but there are a lot of things going on with Xbox, and some studios are being affected by this. Microsoft laid off ten thousand workers. So. Does that mean that our gaming experience is going to suffer? I don't know. We'll have to let time do its thing. But what I can honestly say is when you start to trim the fat and start to make changes like that, especially in the tens of thousands or 10,000, whatever it may be, you start to ask questions. What's going on? What's this restructuring? Are we going to see leaner games? Um, we already have seen, and this is the unfortunate thing right now, we've already seen a lot of games come out that have been just incomplete. Um, and it's, it's just, it's rough. 10,000 between Xbox and Bethesda should have stayed multi-plat. Uh, yeah, I mean, what do you please uh discuss that dza um so yeah it's interesting it's interesting i hope you know i hope that answers your question if you guys have more questions about steam deck i'm we're gonna be talking about the steam deck i have my steam deck plugged in right now it is docked up it's just not looking bright for xbox exclusive it's not oh before we jump into that this is you guys want to see a birthday present i got from my um buddy steven look at this thing it is beautiful and if i wasn't to touch it if i get close to it press this again there is it is so cool it is so unbelievably cool this awesome ultra ball and it comes with this cool case oh gosh which Again, this was a gift. It's so rad. 
I freaking love this thing. Anyway, that was my gift for my brother. Let's talk about the Steam Deck, ladies and gentlemen. They made Bethesda exclusive to Xbox only. Should have stayed multi-plat to get more money. That, so that isn't fully true. Bethesda has released games both on Xbox and on PlayStation. Microsoft owns Bethesda, the studio, but I wouldn't say that it's exclusive to Xbox only. We've seen releases. This is the big thing that I think a lot of people need to uh, understand is that when it comes to exclusives, when it comes to these studio acquisitions, when it comes to all of this stuff, we see the exclusivity play out in regards to games being released on exclusive platforms, and that's what we think is going on. Starfield will be exclusive. Starfield is one game that Bethesda is releasing. There are multiple games that have been released that are still available uh, on PlayStation, which I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, was it Bethesda PlayStation exclusive? There was... Yeah, Bethesda will honor. Yeah, there's still PlayStation 5 exclusives that are coming out. Yes, Starfield is really Deathloop. I think Deathloop, was that a PlayStation 5 exclusive? That's by Arcane. Never mind, wrong one. No, publisher Bethesda. I believe that Deathloop was released on, released on PlayStation. Maybe I'm wrong on that one. Can you guys correct me? Was Death Deathloop was before the deal. Sorry again for taking up combo over. No, it's fine, dude. Starfield is one game though, right? One game. I don't think that this purchasing of by Sony, by Microsoft, means that now every single game. I mean, it's clear. Microsoft wants to purchase Activision Blizzard. It's been talked about. The speculations and rumors have been going all over the place. Microsoft has been extremely outspoken about how they have no intention, have no intention of making Call of Duty exclusive to Xbox, which is smart because it would waste money. They would lose, lose out on money. Now, they also even have come out and said that they have no problem allowing for games from Xbox's studios to be on PlayStation Plus, which is a streaming software. But not streaming software, is a streaming service or a, or a um, whatever you want to call it, um, subscription service. There have been multiple play games that are Xbox Studio games, whether it was before or after, they are owned by Xbox and they are allowed to be on PlayStation Plus. So this doom and gloom that exists, this absolute doom and gloom about how when these studios purchase are purchased by companies, Sony, Microsoft, it means that no longer the other one's gonna go to the other one. I don't think that that is always the case. And we're seeing it being played out. So I, I think that gamers as a whole need to back up. And also, let's be honest. Most of us, especially some of us who are a little bit older, right? Some of us parents, we're multi-platform. A good amount of us are multi-platform, whether we have an S and a 5, whether we have a PS4 and a Series X, whether we have a PS4 and a Series S, whether we have a Nintendo and a Series S, whatever it may be, we're multi-platform. So really, like, complaining that, oh, it's going to be, ex like, we have them. That loyalty to one side and not owning the other is pretty outdated at this point, especially with stuff like the Series S being so unbelievably affordable. I know most people play on console, but I find that PC plus PS5 com combo is unreal. PS5 for single player and PC for multiplayer games and single player games that I want the best experience. So let's transition then over to the Steam Deck conversation then, because I think that there's a way for us as gamers to save so much money playing games like you just said. So the Steam Deck, something that I have been diving more and more in, and you've seen on my channel, I've been doing lots of coverage of it. 
the Steam Deck as a gaming console is pretty unreal. Uh, it is able to do, uh, it's able to do emulation really well. Um, I am still learning the different ins and outs. We're not going to cover emulation because I think that that's a topic that's a personal topic. I think emulation should be done personally uh, because there is an ethical question that goes with it when it comes to ownership of games, being able to acquire games that aren't able to be acquired. Is this copyright infringement? Is this trademark and whatever it may be. So we're not covering emulation today. That is a conversation I'll leave to people who really dive deep into emulation. I'm not going to lie and say I don't emulate. I absolutely emulate, but I do not want to cover emulation today. What I do want to cover is what it's like using the Steam Deck, not only as a gaming handheld console, but also a docked handheld console and also a docked PC. Not going to do a handheld PC because I can't stream that, but I am going to show you what it looks like when the Series S is docked, not Series S, when the Steam Deck is docked, and we're gonna talk more and more about it. So I already have it all set up. I already have my controller. So this is, let's talk first and foremost, the, the intricacies of this. I use the Steam Deck dock specifically. My Steam Deck dock has a uh, dongle plugged in. That dongle that's plugged in is for this mouse this cheap 2.4 mouse or 2.4 yeah, gigahertz wireless mouse. So this is always plugged into the back and the battery case is off for some reason. It's just a piece, it's a piece of junk mouse. I have a Bluetooth keyboard, a mechanical keyboard that I use for my Mac, but it also has a USB port that is plugged in directly, sorry, I have a fuzz in the air, to the Steam Deck dock as well. And I can switch it into Windows, and so it, it runs that. And that is this right here. This is my keyboard with Arubesh, okay? These two things run pretty seamlessly. I keep the mouse up underneath my LG C2, which is my monitor, and I have the Steam Deck all set up. Uh, let's answer some questions real quick. I've been playing Choo Choo Charles on my deck. It runs pretty awesome, that's rad. Is there a chance that the Series S can't last the new generation or will be supported until the end? It will be supported until the end. You can quote me on that one. Because you can also quote Phil Spencer. And you can quote as many devs bitching and moaning about how the Series S is terrible to actually do stuff for, but then you go ahead and play Fortnite with Unreal Engine and you realize that Op proper optimization and care for the gaming experience for gamers that little extra oomph can make an incredible gaming experience for all people when that care is put in i think that fortnite's a really good example now is it a resource heavy game no but i think it's a really good example of what happens when you try really hard to optimize for multiple things heck the new fortnite season looks even great on the series uh, on the Nintendo Switch, it's unbelievable. I think we're in a really cool place in gaming and we need uh, studios to really understand that. So does the Steam Deck dock have ethernet? Yes, it has three USB ports. You'll have to miss, you'll have to excuse me because I don't have them memorized what type. It has a USB-C port, which I use as a power pass-through. So the USB-C is plugged in. When you buy the Steam Deck dock specifically, you have the ability, you also get a new power adapter or power, yeah, power adapter with that. Did I mute this? Oh, there it is. And so uh, it's mine's pass through. I have one USB port is my, is my dongle for my mouse. The second USB port is for my, uh, what is this? this my uh keyboard and then i have the usb-c pass through for power and then ethernet is not plugged in because i have a mesh system with crazy wi-fi what i like about this steam deck dock is it receives firmware updates from valve and so because valve is using because valve has been pushing updates and i said this in a couple of my videos there's been so much unbelievable support from Valve and the community for the Steam Deck and Steam Deck Dock specifically that combo that I have a, re a restored faith in what 
uh, the Steam Deck is going to be capable of doing. I know that when it was first released, there was a lot of questions. Is Valve going to drop it like the Steam Controller because they really release hardware and they don't even try? And I'm seeing commitments to the hardware that is really reassuring, especially when you're spending upwards of five, 600 bucks if you buy the mid to top tier one. If you buy the bottom tier one for 400, pretty good. I believe that the dock itself is 90, 80. Steam Deck dock. Uh, Steam Deck docking station is 90 bucks. That $90 comes with a uh a power adapter it has usb c it has three usbs it has ethernet it has display port and hdmi pretty impressive pretty impressive now there's inevitable that someone's gonna be like there are better ones on amazon yes but those, there's even ones on amazon that you can install um ssd into pretty cool right yeah but also I'd rather get first party hardware that receives firmware updates because I know the optimization, whatever is going to happen, is going to be utilized rather than third party that isn't receiving the same type of support. $90 for those two is a little pricey. There are cheaper ones online on Amazon, but I don't think that it's so expensive that it's a deterrent. Okay. And that's just the dock. So let's, let's move some stuff around. Almost any USB-C dock works great. They took a while to release theirs, but the support for docks is unreal. It really is. Have you been more inclined to get gaming PC now that you've experienced the Steam Deck? Uh, no. And that is because the Steam Deck, and this is the point I, I want to get to, is so efficient at what it does that I am I haven't felt, at least yet, I have not felt a... Uh, sorry, I'm trying to move all my stuff up in my other monitor i haven't felt any sort of throttling or lack of performance because the steam deck isn't powerful enough now i know that i'm missing out on performance for sure for sure but i don't think that i'm missing out so tremendously and that's what's really exciting okay so let me turn on everything real quick we're going to switch over you're gonna see, yes, I have GoldenEye 007. I have been playing through some games that I much prefer to play on the Steam Deck. Uh, one of them being Kingdom Hearts Re-Chain of Memories because the Chain of Memories that you can play on the uh, PlayStation is rough. Final Fantasy 15, which is gonna be our demo today. Metroid Fusion. Apex is available. It's not installed. Nino Kuni to Revenant Kingdom, which looks better than the Switch version. Almost any USB C dock. Oh yes, all USB C. Uh, almost all USB C uh, things work. These are the games. I don't have a tremendous. I don't have a lot of games here. So we're gonna hop into this. We're gonna play. This is Final Fantasy 15, Windows Edition. Now, what's exciting is this is a. Uh, really not well optimized game and so you're going to see what it looks like with a poorly optimized game being played on the steam deck okay and now what is super cool is i'm going to pause the music what's super cool is the fact that i can play this on the go this game is probably one of my i'd say top 10 it's an interesting installation to Final Fantasy, but I really enjoy it. I was going to go and buy some other games, but that is one thing I will say with the Steam Deck is I want to make sure I have my this one. Yeah, that's one thing with the Steam Deck that I, I don't love is I've been a console gamer for such a long time that uh, I would have to repurchase a lot of games. So I've repurchased this game. It was on Hella Sale. So I got this game. Yo, just landed in Cali. How can you be live and pick me up? Wait, really? I didn't know you're in California. Right on, dude. Um, yeah, so let's take a look. And so what I'm going to do here is what we're going to do. We're going to play 
a couple minutes of, oh, I should have started it fresh. Well, no. I'm going to play a couple minutes here, and I have this exact game on PlayStation 5. And so we'll play a couple minutes on PlayStation 5. So you can see the comp the two. And now this is a game that was released on PlayStation 4. I can't hear it. Can you guys? Hold on. Maybe I need to turn it up here. There we go. Look at that. Oh, hey there, Prince. Now, I will say that I don't know how it looks to you guys. For me, before, it looks pretty go rough on, look <laughs> on sure my C2 just because it's not optimized. Um, now, this is on medium, okay? And so we can, I think I can get in and get some, sadly, quick trip here and then off to Yosemite. Okay. Um, let's see if I can get into the well, might as well make so we, use of the I can get into the frame rates if you want but this is running at 60 I know it's running at 60 because that is what I set it to Whoa. Yeah, and this game originally came out on PlayStation 4 it was available Wait. on Xbox as well uh, what's a kill? You, right now I can hear the Steam Deck okay we're going to go ahead and see if we can get into some sort of fighting. I am playing time. on... Let's see. There we go. Great. It's been such a long time since I played this game, so... I suggest we confer with Cindy. Broken down and flat broke. Adding Great. Insult awesome. To injury. Old man's in for both after charging us I'm not going to consult with Cindy. I'm going to yeah. get into a fight. Let's pay him a visit. Let's get into a fight. Unless I can't get into a fight yet because I don't have... There we go. Fight. Close. There we go. It's been such a long time since I played this game. Nope. There we go. Stay on your feet. Success. So this is one song. What this game looks like. On Steam Deck. Okay. So we're gonna keep running around. This is the kind of the draw distance we're dealing with. Sounds like you're having fun. Now, I don't know, chat, what do you guys, how do you guys feel about what this looks like? Again, this is, this has been very, oh, is it? Okay, cool, yeah. So I swapped my controls. How do you guys feel this looks? I believe I can even run to that. Uh, I can't go, I think there's going to be a barrier. Yeah, I can't get past that barrier. But, see some baddies over here. What's wild is that this, again, originally was released on PlayStation 5, 4 and Xbox. You ever oh, gosh. The best offense is a good defense. Let's go. Let's go. Die on me. Okay, okay, okay. I'll back you up. No, I'm counting on you. That's a lot of baddies. Let's back away. Now it's time to go to town. Okay, go to town. Which one's keep it together? Okay. Oh boy. I think I am in over my head on this one, so I'm gonna run. Flee, 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 flee. We fleet. Still got experience though. Oh yeah, I forgot you get stasis. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'll quit this 
I'm not going to save because we didn't really do anything. And uh, this is this is something that is pretty amazing here. So let's go ahead and we're going to go to power. Switch to desktop. Now watch this, guys. This is what I think is the selling point. Switching out my mouse. I am now on full desktop. Right here. Watch. Okay. We're doing some ROM stuff here. Ready? We're going to go YouTube. We're going to go here. And let's see. Let's go to... I'm not... I don't think I'm even signed in. I'm not signed in. But let's, uh, let's check out Caffeine and Ke Consoles. Oh, cool. Oh, hey, look. Would you look at this? He's live. Let's check it out. Oh, hey, look. Would you look at this? He's live. Let's check it out. I'm on a PC. Right now. I'm on a... Normal, everyday PC. I can go in here. This is now this is Linux based. Okay, this isn't Windows. This is Linux based. I'm using Mozilla, whatever you're into. This is, I can do whatever I want to do. I can install whatever apps are able to be installed on Linux. I can install games. And the crazy thing is, I'm done. I want to go back and play video games. Double click return to gaming mode. Put my mouse up. Switch my keyboard back. Because I'm not going to need that right now. And uh, let's see what happens. Let's play some Final Fantasy 15. This is the reality of the Steam Deck right now with a dock. Now, what's even more crazy is I can do all that exactly the same in handheld mode. I don't have to go and just plug this in. What this is doing with the dock is it's consistently delivering it power through the dock, okay? Because my dock has power pass through, which it doesn't have to. I do not have to power it. I can unplug that power right now, and it will still do this. It is consistently delivering it power, which I believe will allow it to run at higher performance. We'll be able to run at a higher performance level. I Not like... I'm not going to get better performance, but I'll be able to sustain a higher output without it blowing through the battery because it's getting consistent power. So that's pretty exciting. And it's as simple as that. Now, is the Steam Deck, this is the question, is the Steam Deck a console or a PC? And I would say that it is absolutely both through and through. Because the interface we have here with, oh, that's what I want to show you guys too. This is actually pretty cool. So we're going to load into Final Fantasy 15 so just to show you this. Okay. Watch this. So I would say it's both. You guys, I want to know your, your answer. All right, almost there. So this is something that I am pretty impressed by. Um, load in. It is loud, though. I will give it that. It is loud. Cool. I loaded... This cutscene. 
which is a pretty funny cutscene. I think we can forget about hitching our way there. God, man, it does look good, doesn't it? The city. Yeah, you can only go so far on the kindness of strangers. Skip it. You're just gonna have to push her all the way. So, we'll start this off. Push. You pushing, dude? There we go. So... This is something that I thought was cool. I am unbelievable. Not turning exactly it off. A fairy tale beginning. Be it's completely turned off. I have turned off my Steam Deck. Okay, it's off. I think it's more in sleep mode, but watch this. On. Look, Back in the game immediately. Let's just hope this is reattach my omen. re up uh, get my what? controller plugged in Push this thing by yourself all by myself and we're good to go notice if we just let go pronto don't even think about it save some breath for pushing dude look how big this car is time to switch no -uh. we just switched back there and that's a huge car i'm pretty sure it is that heavy oh, my hands are killing me look at this thing I actually really like this car a lot. Any luck? The Revelia. Is it just me? Or was it supposed to be way closer? I assure you, the map is correct. The map said Hammerhead was right there. Literally next door. I just door. I think I have to pass this block and it goes into the world. Yeah, I think that's it. That's it. Nope. One more. There you go. Oh, he laps him. That's great. So that's something that I like. I have put my Steam Deck to sleep, put it in my in the container, and I container in the case, and then just like haven't played it for like two, three weeks. Turn it on, and boom, the game is back to exactly where I stopped it. And that kind of thing is reminiscent of Quick Resume from what's it, from uh, the Xbox. I mean, dude, that this game is so good. You guys even pushing hard as I can. All right, cool. So let's switch over to PlayStation 5 so you can see the difference between the two, okay? Hold on, let me plug it in. Y'all kept a girl waiting. Now, which one's the prince? Aha! Ha! All right, now. Let's go ahead and turn that on. Turn off my Steam Deck. Because it detected that we're no longer using it. We should be good to go here. Oh, crud. I have DHCP turned on, so I have to turn that off, I think. Unless it's going to allow me to go through and I'm going to have to switch it myself. I think it's going to make me... I'm going to have to plug this in a different way. Yeah. Stand by again, guys. Hold on. We'll get there. The obnoxious thing about having all these systems and trying to use streaming software... It's a lot of work. Uh. 
Okay, let's get this all taken care of real quick. Okay, cool. We're going to switch over to the other. I have to change one setting real quick, and then we'll be good to go. It's, uh, yeah. How are the controls? I'm struggling to enjoy the handheld mode. I, I don't hate them, personally. Um, I don't love them. <laughs> That's for darn sure. I don't love the controls. Uh, I think that is a little awkward having the deep, like the D pad and stuff off to the side rather than underneath or it's just, a, it's basically a third way you're going to have to learn how to interact. And that's because, uh, you're, yeah, it's a third way you're going to have to learn how to interact because it, if you're a PlayStation user or if you're an Xbox user, um, then you're essentially, yeah, you have those two, the, the, the symmetrical and then the asymmetrical. And then now that you're a using the steam deck, it's now like a common, it's like a symmetrical, but it's like a combination. It's, it's kind of a mess. So if you're not someone who likes the steam decks controller, then yeah, yeah. It is what it is. For those of you who want to see the comparison, we're about to do it right now. We are, here we go. We're going to load game. Hopefully, I have some sort of save file. I'm pretty sure I do. I do have a save file, and I believe that save file is the exact same one. So here we go. So what you just looked at was the Steam Deck, and now what you're looking at is the PlayStation 5 which is pretty uh, pretty beefy when it comes to the comparison between the two. Now, I have talked to some people who know more than I do. Please be the same cutscene. Yes. So it's smoother. It's clearer. That's for sure. But is how much difference, how much of a difference are you going to see between the two? That's the big thing. I think we can forget about hitching our way there. A little bit more dynamic range. Yeah, you can only go so far on the It's smoother, stages. for sure smoother. You're just gonna have to push her all the way. I've already pushed myself. Let's go ahead and skip this. To the brink of death. I. It's not that big of a difference. Unbelievable. Not exactly a fairy tale beginning, huh, Prince Noctis? The frame rates are better. Frame rates are hands down better on a PlayStation 5 versus a Steam Deck. But. Do me a favor. What? Push this thing by yourself. All by myself? You won't even notice if we just let go. Dudes. Don't even can we all agree it. that the Send difference between the two is not Ignis, as on, much I'm as you switch. would expect? Uh, we just switched back there. Yeah, Holy smokes. I was Okay, I was not expecting that. I'm going to be honest with you. I was not expecting it to look. Easy there, tough guy. Any luck? Only a busy signal. All the wow. Is it just me? Was it supposed to be way closer? I assure That's uh, pretty impressive. The map said Hammerhead was right there. That is pretty impressive. Literally next door. Looks that way on a map of the world. Hmm. My dream is to get the Ionia too. See, in the problem, I wouldn't consider it a problem, but the difference between Ionia two. And the Ionio and the Steam Deck 
is, and I think um, Wood from Beat'em Ups made a really good point. Steam Deck has Steam, so they can charge less. They can lose money on the Steam Deck because they will make it up on the Steam store. Um, we'll go back to this. Sorry. But Aya Neo doesn't. Aya Neo is a PC, and so they have to charge so much money so they have some sort of profit. And so you're going to have to learn. If you're kind of... The, there's here i'm gonna pause this because i don't want to listen to her um yeah when it comes to the i and neo you're, you're just spending more money because it's a pc without a dedicated in like thing like steam and so i think that's great the i and neo is really cool it's really it's a really really enticing offer but i'm not overwhelmingly inclined to purchase one because Though it is more powerful, it is more capable, and it has that versatility, the user friendliness of the Steam Deck with Steam OS is the one-two punch that I am looking for when it comes to playing video games. I, I am coming from a gaming setup that is on PlayStation or on Xbox or Nintendo Switch or whatever, and the UI is pretty streamlined whether you like microsoft sony's ui we can all agree that nintendo's is the most simple um whether you like microsoft or sony's ui is kind of irrelevant because it's pretty uh it's it, it's it's pretty obvious that the ui is very simple and so when i think that one of the best things a device can do or not a device but a, a manufacturer or a developer whatever you want to call it can do is make a device that gets out of the way i will say that one of my i have plenty of criticisms far more criticisms than uh, accolades i would give to apple products uh, as someone who used to work for apple i think i think a lot of us are a little jaded by working for them but anyway um one thing that I think that Apple does better than anyone else, and I also believe that it's the reason why I will stick with their products, is they are so simple to use that when you think you want to do something, you already know how to do it on a Mac. And I, like on, for the most part, or on, a, on an iPhone. If you want to find something on your Mac, you're gonna click on something called Finder. If you want to check your messages, you're gonna click on the app that says messages. On your phone, if you want to call somebody, it's gonna be on the app that's called phone. And you don't have to download additional apps to make those things happen. And so with that, I would say that some people complain because the UI is closed. I think that a closed UI offers a gaming situation or a, or a user experience that is that of one that encourages you to use it to play video games which is its intended use there's always and there always will be the individuals who want to use you know there are always going to be the individuals who want to use stuff like a steam deck a playstation 5 well not really a playstation 5 a Steam Deck or Ion Neo or any of these handheld PCs slash consoles in a extremely unorthodox fashion. Push it to its limits. Install applications on there that aren't intended to be on there and really push the boundaries, which I think is exciting that these devices exist and they exist in a way that is allowing people to do that. But what I think is more exciting than having something like a Steam Deck that allows you to boot into a desktop version of it, yes, it is Linux, and yes, you can put Windows on it, but you can boot into a desktop version and essentially have a desktop computer, surf the web, install applications you need to use that are uh, compatible with Linux, and then pick it up use it in the handheld fashion because it has integrated hardware that is controls, touch pads, and different shortcuts to have on screen keyboards. And then you can 
switch over to the Steam Deck side or the Steam OS side of things and then interact with it like it's that of a gaming console with a UI that is relatively simple and streamlined. Given you have to have internet access to really take advantage of that UI, but that's, you know, its own bag of tricks. And I think that that is something that is really, really enticing, really, really draws people to something like a Steam Deck or, you know, other handheld devices because it has the ability to allow you to play games. And so I will say that the simpler a UI can be and the more it can get out of the way of the decision-making process that is needed to get into a game, I think the more in, the, the more attractive that device is going to be. I think that the Nintendo Switch is such a popular device. One, because of course, Nintendo has an extremely long reach when it comes to its video games, but also it's so simple. It is so unbelievably simple. Yes, you can install YouTube on it. Yes, there are people that are able to do some sort of browsing on it. But realistically, you have little squares organized in two or three ways. Last time played, alphabetical or shortcuts. I think that's all you can do on the Nintendo Switch. And so when you turn on your Nintendo Switch, you are encouraged to do one thing, and that is play a video game. With the Xbox, Series S, Series X, 1S, whatever, or the PlayStation 5. When you turn it on, there are multiple panels that exist. One would be the panel to encourage you to play video games, which has your video games listed. The other would be cycling over using a trigger button or a, a bumper button to go over to the media side of things where a lot of people utilize the Xbox's ability to stream also, the PlayStation's ability to stream in high, high, high resolutions, as well as dynamic, high dynamic range and all the different things that are there, and watch their media through their gaming console because both Sony and Microsoft do encourage their users to use their devices to stream, whether it's their own services or other services. So you can install apps like Netflix or Hulu or Crunchyroll, or any of those types of things to watch your chosen shows. Uh, and I think that's really, really exciting. But that is, again, what the PlayStation and the Xbox are there to do. They are there to allow you to play video games and allow you to stream shows and watch your media because they are interactive media players as well as gaming consoles. They're not portable PCs. And so... Where I think Steam Deck takes a step above something like an Aya Neo or a, God, there's a few other ones that are out there. I think the One Player X is another one, where it is just one cut above those two or those three or whatever those pocket PCs is one the price point because Steam also offers Steam games and the whole Steam library. They can sell the deck at a loss so that they can make it up in the actual sales of their games, which Steam sales are so abundant. If you favorite a game or wishlist a game, it's gonna probably go on sale within three to six months. So you never really have to buy anything at full retail, kind of like Michael's. Don't go into Michael's and buy something at full retail, use a coupon. And so, yeah, with the Steam Deck, where I think it, it, benefit, it benefits, not benefits, the benefits that it has, is one, it does have the ability to purchase Steam games, so the device is cheaper, but two, the UI. It is the UI. It's clunky, but, but the Steam OS UI flashed over it is doing the job that it's intended to do, which is to allow you to play video games and to not bog you down with decision making. And when you get a device and you have to make more than two or three decisions, you end up spending more time customizing, diving deeper, and checking out the little nooks and crannies than actually using it for intended purposes. And then that device goes from using, goes from being a integrated device into your gaming ecosystem. And now it's a gadget that you own. And gadgets are used far less frequently. They're often used here and there to show off to your friends and to show 
yourself that you have something cool. So I think that Steam Deck really, really is the beginning of something quite special when it comes to the next generation of gaming. I think that it is capable of being used as a PC, but if I was to classify the Steam Deck as one device, if I had to choose, is it a gaming console or is it a PC? I would call it a gaming console because its intended use is to play video games and it does it extremely well, extremely well. I hope that you get one because it's pretty dope. Now, chat, how are we thinking? For the old guy wasting his time playing video games. Oh, look, it's our buddy here who comes in and chats and watches a guy. So that's our, that's our resident hater. He comes in, talks crap. He probably is one of the people who dislikes every one of my videos, which is fine. And if we're going to call a spade a spade, uh, he watches me make money playing video games. That's a interesting pastime there, Ack. Interesting pastime. But I can get a 64 gig deck for 2K and a one terabyte SSD. He is subscribed though. Oh, he has to be. He can't comment unless he's subscribed. That's funny. That's funny. And not only is he subscribed, he's subscribed for five minutes plus. Holy smokes. That's even better. You're probably an old guy wasting his time commenting on Rand. Yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. I didn't even realize that. He's just been outed as a sub. He's a sub. Ah, uh, that's so funny. Holy smokes. That's too good, man. That is too good. Dedicated hater right there. Dude, I have to give it to him. If he's sub and has those bell notifications turned on, I'm uh, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. That's great. So guys, that's my that's my little spiel for the day. I am excited to uh, to do more with the Steam Deck. Um and yeah, man, I'm I'm super stoked to do more and more with the Steam Deck. Uh, and not going to lie to you. Part of the reason why I streamed today was because I wanted to try streaming again on this channel. And also I have been having some weird audio issues. Subscribed to immediately dislike new videos. Yeah, dude. Love it. Love it. Interaction on my videos are all very, very helpful. Uh, thanks for the breakdown. Seems like an awesome little console. It really is. And I, and I think that it's. It's something that more people should look into. It honestly is a pretty rad console. Now, I'm going to go and make myself a little something to eat. And in 20 minutes, 40 plus gaming has provided a great outlet for me. Follow Andrew Tate and come out of the matrix. <laughs> this guy right here. Hey, why do you think I'm dressed like an engineer? I'm outside of the matrix. I'm on the Nebuchadnezzar. I am removing people from their hater nature online. You, my friend, is you are unbelievably plugged in still to the Matrix if this is how you're acting. Dude, I'm the captain of the Nebuchadnezzar, dude. Do you even know what that means? Do you know what the Nebuchadnezzar is? Do you understand that reference? I'm working on an album called Mouse Tank. I, just, I, I, I bet he doesn't even know what the, the Ebenezer Desert. Dude, I bet he doesn't even know what the Nebuchadnezzar is. <laughs> just quoting stuff he's watched on YouTube shorts and TikTok because that's all that exists is Andrew Tate talking on YouTube uh on YouTube Shorts and TikTok. Which I've seen so many Andrew Tate videos. It's unbelievable. I've seen a lot of... Uh, will you be playing Forspoken? I will not be playing Forspoken. I tried the demo and I was so excited for the game. 
and I tried the demo and I was like, oh, it's going to be one of these kind of games. And it just was boring and it seemed unoriginal. It seemed like a combination of Horizon Forbidden West, no, Horizon Zero Dawn mixed with, which, which was a great game, mixed with Spider-Man mechanics. And I'm like, are they just like, the, the, and then with a, a new narrative, like, I'm like, dude, this, it's cool, I guess. Heads up, bots are in full force on your page. Uh, is it the, you dressed like a carpenter? Because of overalls? It's an engineer, baby. Mechanic, the mechanic, dude. It's a good thing you're here. You can download some more useful information and maybe uh, unplug yourself from the matrix, little guy. We should take care of him. I think he's helpless. Uh, yeah, I know. They're they're always because I used the word giveaway once, and because I use the word giveaway, they like to attach and try to get other people to get freaking trapped by the giveaway. So dumb. So dumb. All right, chat. This is a good time. Even if it is a carpenter, at least he is flooring you oh ho, ho! dude that good one good one i just want this i want this little guy to know i want him to tell me what who what the nebuchadnezzar is i, I need i need i need to know if he even knows what the nebuchadnezzar is i need him to i need to know if he knows who nebuchadnezzar is i doubt he does <laughs> Are you going to do any old school style review videos like when you did your Series S reviews and rants? I'm not sure what you mean. Like streams where I stream about the Series S? Probably. I'm trying to navigate this year right now. I have a second kid on the way, so timing is like crazy. I also really miss streaming video games. And so I, I want to figure out how I can stream some video games at the same time. But the video game plays, I'm not going to be here. I, uh, yeah. Living in Babylon, dude. So I'm going to make myself a little snack. If you guys are so inclined and you want to hang out some more, I'm going to hop on a new stream for a short while just to see how I can uh, see if I can get some content going on my other channel, which I is my experiment channel. And uh, I'm going to do some. The only game I'm really looking forward to is Zelda this year. Yeah. Funny enough, the hater didn't even dislike this stream. Why? How do you know? Is there no dislikes? There should be. What? I don't. I better get a dislike. At least one. Hmm. Okay, I'm bouncing. If you guys want to watch any gameplay, I'm going to be over on my other channel at noon. Noon. Okay, noon. And we're gonna be doing something a little different, not Zelda this time, Fortnite. Wasn't Nebuchadnezzar the King of Babylon? He was, but the Nebuchadnezzar was the name of the ship that Morpheus uh, got Neo onto. I've tried to really like Star Wars newer content. I just can't. Morgan, I feel you, buddy. All right, guys, I'll see you over there. Let's hang out over there. Okay, I gotta go, bye.